Oh, fuck. Okay, so the plan was to go on Instagram Live, but <laughs> my account was banned. I, I have no idea what for. I think, I think. <laughs> well, it's quite fitting. It's quite ironic, to be honest. It was because when the guy got beheaded in Paris last month, it was literally like 25 days ago, I think. And I think I tweeted the picture of the cut off head. And I remember getting a message but on Facebook saying like, you're banned now from going on live for a month because we don't trust you. So I think that's what happened. So I'm sorry, it won't be live, but you know what? I'm still gonna do it. I'm gonna just post it on Instagram TV, whatever the fuck that is. Um, so this is my first time doing this, by the way. So please be gentle. <laughs> oh, I really am, I really am sorry. I couldn't go live, they, they wouldn't let me though. Okay, relax. Anyways, deep breath. <laughs> that's quite funny though. Um, so what the fuck are we doing here today? So um, today, or yesterday, it's the five year anniversary of the Paris attacks. Well, one of the Paris attacks, the 2015 one, in which 130 people lost their lives um, because of Islamic terrorism. And I remember that day, um, just like the day of any other attack, like you go online, right, on social media, and you see the same shit over and over again, right? The same boring com uh, conversations. Like on the one side, you have these people going like, oh, these dirty Muslims, the terrorists. And on the other side, you have them going, no, Islam is a religion of peace, right? And they just keep talking past each other over and over again, right? And it's just dull and repetitive and boring. And then you probe a little bit more and you come to the realization that like, neither this person nor this person has ever actually asked himself the question of like, well, what is Islam, right? <laughs> um, so yeah, they're, they're basing everything off of like secondhand um, sources, right? These guys are going like, oh, those Muslims are, uh, those terrorists are Muslim, therefore all Muslims are terrorists. And these ones are going, no, 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 my friends from, from down the street, they're Muslim and they're really nice, so Muslim, Islam is a religion of peace. But like the second someone opens their mouth and says, Muslims are, like you can already switch off and like th th nothing that comes out of that person's mouth after that is going to be worth your fucking time. <laughs> like literally, like people forget, but um, Muslims make up literally 25% of the world's population, right? That's 1.8 billion people. Do you know what 1.8 billion people look like? Like try to imagine 1.8 billion people. I, I swear to you, you can't. I have a difficult time grasping large numbers. So even for me to imagine 1.8 billion people, it, it, it's like you, you can't. Now, there's absolutely nothing that you say that will apply to all 1.8 billion people. Even like, even to think of doing so is bigoted, right? That, that's literally the definition of bigotry. Um, and they come in all different flavors, right? You have your Sunnis, you have your Shiites, you have your Salafists, your Wahhabis, your secular Muslims, your liberal Muslims. So like, there's literally nothing you can say. Um, so it, it, it's stupid to even pose that question, like, are Muslims violent? Are Muslims homophobic? What, what we can do though, and what we will do, and what we should do, is we can ask the question, is Islam violent? Is Islam homophobic? Is Islam misogynistic, right? Like that we can kind of get more or less an answer to. And how do we go about doing that? Well, we gotta look at what Islam actually is, right? We gotta go straight to the source. So right, like, you can, you, can, you can read an Al Jazeera blog post talking about how Islam is a religion of peace. You can listen to a madman ranting on Facebook and now he's banned how Islam is, is, is violent. But wouldn't it be so much better for you to just pick up this book, the Quran, and see for yourself, right? Like, cut out the middleman, go straight to the source, get that 100% uncut, pure Islam, right? Uh, it's like your history teacher used to say in high school, like, you got to consult the primary source. This is the primary source, right? Um, so that's kind of why I, I started this move, <laughs> initiative movement uh, five years ago. And every year on this day, um, I ask my family and friends, like, look, pick up the Quran, you know, read it, uh, read as much as you can of it, right? Like learn something new about the religion. And I, I really do think it's, it's an initiative that should be supported by both sides, right? Like if you're Muslim, hey, awesome. More people learn about my, my wonderful religion. Why wouldn't you want people to pick up the Quran and read it, right? It's great. And if you're more like me, you know, agnostic, atheist, then you know that like the best way to get someone to start questioning their religion, to maybe leave it, not, not that that's the aim, right? But it's better if people actually engage, right? With, with, with their religion. Um, okay. 
So, yeah. So maybe we should rewind a little bit and ask ourselves, well, what is the Quran? Um, I'm just going to read you from the back, to be honest. The Quran, believed to be by Muslims the word of God, was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad 1,400 years ago. It is the supreme authority in Islam and the living source of all Islamic teaching. It is a sacred text and a book of guidance that sets out the creeds, rituals, ethics, and laws of the Islamic religion. So, okay, maybe I should rewind even more. What's the story behind the Quran? Like, what is the, like who wrote it, right? That kind of thing. Okay, so the story goes a little something like this. I'm going to try my best. So, 1,400 years ago, there was this <laughs> sheep farmer who had no basic education, can't read, can't write, wandering the desert in the middle of nowhere, Middle East, right? And from the heavens comes down this angel, Archangel Gabriel, Jabril. By the way, <laughs> if I get like a character's name wrong or if I say a date wrong, like, I'm sorry, I, I have some bullet points here. I'm doing my best. This isn't a total freestyle, but I, I like do fact check me is what I'm saying. But I am going to try my best to be accurate. So <laughs> Archangel Jabril comes down from the heavens, right? And reveals to this illiterate sheep fucker, sheep farmer. <laughs> See, I told you I would mess up. <laughs> to this illiterate sheep farmer, um, God's final revelation, Allah's final revelation. And that is what became, what is the, the, the Quran, right? I, I don't know how... <laughs> The Prophet Muhammad wrote it down. I think maybe his boys had an iPad and, and jotted it down. Somehow it was it was written down, codified. So basically, you know, the important thing here, and it's very important, I'm going to repeat this a few times again. The Quran is the word of God, right? So when someone says, oh, the Quran says this, the Quran says that, what you should be hearing is Allah says this, Allah says that, right? That, it, it's important. and You'll see why later. Uh, all, all, obviously, all of this was done in Arabic because you know, God speaks Arabic. <laughs> that makes sense. Right. So that's uh, the background for the Quran. Um, so this is my Quran. I've had it for about 10 years now. Um, I travel with it. It makes for great conversation at airport security. <laughs> uh, as you can see, it's um, color, co color coordinated. So green is, is violence. Um, pink, red is like anti-women, misogynist, sexist stuff. Uh, yellow is like uh, homophobic, stoning gays. Uh, then blue is like miscellaneous, kill the blasphemers, kill the Jews, kill the atheists. Yeah, that's it. Right. So, a valid question you might have at this point, and I hope you have this question, is you could be like, look, can you be a Muslim and just choose bits of the Quran, right? Like pick a cherry pick. That's the word, right? Uh, can you just ignore the bad and just go roll with the good? So if you have that question, well done. <laughs> but the short answer to that is um, no, you, you can't. And that's not me making the rules. It literally says so in here. Um, yeah. So basically... <laughs> You can't cherry pick. This is the word of uh, of God. It's it's perfect. It's an all or nothing deal, right? That does not mean that millions of Muslims do cherry pick. And to be honest with you, thank fuck that they do. Like the world would be a very different place if they cherry picked. But um, like Allah was two steps ahead of y'all. So when you want to get fucked up on the weekends, He actually says here, like, look, because uh, it opens the door to to abuse, right? You could be like live a haram life, and then on your deathbed be like. I'm a Muslim, I'm a Muslim. <laughs> it doesn't work like that, right? No, you, ha you have to follow Islam according to, 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 to God's word. Um, so I always find it a little bit funny when you, you know, when you talk to someone and they go like, oh yeah, I'm a Muslim, but I'm a naughty Muslim. Every weekend I like to drink a little bit, you know? <laughs> like, okay, fair enough. But like, what I hear, and like what you should hear, is if I said to you like, look, I'm a vegetarian. I'm a vegetarian, but every Friday, I like to go to KFC and eat a big fucking bucket of fried chicken to devour that shit. But I'm a vegetarian, <laughs> right? Like, what would you say to me? You would say to me, like, no, oh, you're a bit of an idiot. You're definitely not a vegetarian. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of like how I see you know, Muslims who drink. Well, you, I mean, look, don't get me wrong. You want to do haram shit, I'll be there with you doing haram shit. But at the end of the day, um, I don't think Allah is going to approve of, of, of you drinking, and I don't think you're going to get into his paradise. Sorry to tell you that. But it's good that most Muslims that we know do, do cherry pick. 
Right. Um, where are we at now? Okay. Fuck, I still haven't started reading. <laughs> just... Sorry, man. This, this is going to take a little, a little while. So every time I, I do this, as in every time I, I post something about Islam or the Quran, or um, people feel the need to <laughs> inbox me and let me know their, their viewpoint, which is fine, which is fine. But over the last 10 years, I've kind of... Um, broken up the replies into two broad categories and i only have a problem with one of, of those replies so there's category a first I, I got no no calls with these motherfuckers so the type a type of response someone so i'll post something from the quran right and a person will, will message me like father it does not say that what the hell i don't know why this bitch has a lisp or why it's a female it's almost exclusively frustrated arab dudes blowing up my inbox um, but basically, the gist of what they're saying is like, they're just in disbelief. So this is the type of person, not to generalize, but it's like, mommy is Muslim, daddy is Muslim, you know, therefore I must be Muslim. So grew up in the West, like maybe when they were eight years old, they did like half a Ramadan. Now that they're older, drinking, drugs, fucking hookers. Yeah, the A to Z of Haram. <laughs> um, but the defining characteristic is like, they have never, or almost never in their entire life, picked up one of these bad boys and looked inside, right? They just call themselves Muslim. But when, when they see me post something about that is violent or something like that, they're just like, no, no fucking way. If it was, surely I would know about it. Like, no fucking way. Um, so the conversation goes a little something like this. Like, I will be very, like, I'll send them the relevant verses and explanations some background literature. And normally the person goes like, oh, shit, I, I didn't know, what the fuck, right? So like, they just accept, you know what, that, 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 that's great, like that's, like that's life, right? You have some preconceptions of something, you're presented with evidence that contradicts that, and you update your, your previous beliefs, your preconceptions, right? So they just say like, oh, shit, I, I didn't know that that's what the Quran says. Now I know, and I, we leave it at that. I got, you know, that, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. If you didn't know those things were in here, now you know, we leave it at that. Bless their heart. Just like an innocent ignorance type of thing. I got no qualms with, with these like secular Western Muslims who just didn't know, right? That's the type A type of response. The type B motherfuckers. These motherfuckers, I got a bone to pick with. So these people, um, they know damn well what it says in here. They know about the homophobia. They know about the violence. They know about the misogyny. But yet they will say they, they will defend Islam, which is which is fine. That's not the problem. You can defend Islam. That that's okay. But it's the manner in in which they do it, right? They present what are known as bad faith arguments. So what's a bad faith argument? A bad faith argument is like. First of all, I, I call these the Islam apologists, Muslim apologists. That's what they're known in the, the atheist circles. Apologist is a person who defends the religion, which is fine. It's fine to defend the religion, but it's how they do it. So they will just give arguments that I am pretty convinced that they themselves don't actually buy, right? So, and I, this is kind of revealed later on through, through, through conversation. So they'll say, and I'll go through each one of these in turn. They'll say things like, oh, well, you're, that, that's interpretation or like oh what you have a bad translation or what about Christianity or like oh you're cherry picking so just they'll say something to defend Islam um, in the hopes that you like you know shut the fuck up I think there's a little element of like pride I think when they see me talking shit about Islam and they're from like a Muslim family they are like what the fuck that's so like Sasha's talking shit right or like if I post something about the hijab like, they're like, oh, my auntie Fatima, she wears a hijab. So she's talking shit about my auntie Fatima. Like, no, like what a, what a Neanderthal, like barbaric way of thinking about that. Like, this is not personal at all. Like my beef, my pork <laughs> is with the things that are in this book. Not with any individual, like, not with the individual Muslims in your life, not with Muslims. And like, I try to be very, very careful in how I phrase myself. I might slip up, especially now since this is like live recording, but I never make um, like 
generalizing statements about Muslims or anything. I, I only want to talk about Islam, right? So don't take it personally. Don't get emotional, right? It's, it's, it's not like that at all. Um, okay. Well, still haven't started reading. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to read to you a few of my favorite verses from here. Um, but I'm, I'm going to flip the camera so you read along with me for two reasons. One, because it's <laughs> less awkward. And uh, two, so you can actually see with your own eyes. So you know I'm not bullshitting. <laughs> These things are actually in here. Right. Uh, and I, I'm not going to comment on what I read. I want you to make up your own mind. Um, what I will do is I'll skip right ahead to how a Muslim apologist, so the type B type of responders, might defend that. That's what I'll do. Okay, well, I think we're actually ready to start. What should we start with? Should we start with a little bit of violence? A little bit of violence. Yeah, let's do violence. So as you can see, there's a lot of violence. But I picked one of the sword verses. Sword verses. I hope you can see it. Okay, so I'm gonna flip. flip, flip, flip. Come, come hither, my child. Okay. So, 533. Can you see? Those who wage war against God and his messenger and strive to spread corruption in the land, aka me, should be punished by death, crucifixion, the amputation of an alternate hand and foot, or banishment from the land, a disgrace for them in this world, and then a terrible punishment in the hereafter. Unless they repent before you, overpower them. In that case, bear in mind that God is forgiving and merciful. Right. So remember, th th this is God speaking, right? That, that is Allah. Okay, so I'm not going to comment on that. I'm going to leave it up to you. You can decide. Is it, is it worrying? Is it not worrying? I'll skip right ahead to what fucking Diwali stick fireworks going on outside. So to what an apologist would say. Sorry, I got a little scared that it was like a terrorist attack. <laughs> okay, so the apologist would say something like, if I, if I read that out, they'll be like, Sasha, Habibi, you misunderstand. The violence in here, you have to take it in the correct context. Context is important. Context and interpretation are important. And you know what? They have a point. Context is important, right? If you pick up a, a Harry Potter book, open it up, random paragraph, you're not gonna know what the fuck is going on. You'd be like, who Hagrid motherfucker? What the fuck is that? Right, so context is important. You can't just pull random paragraphs from the little book. Um, so their usual spiel is something like this. All the violence in here, if you look closely and carefully, a few pages before that, you'll see that um, like, uh, the Prophet was under attack, right? There, there were rivaling, I forgot who it's called, the Meccans were attacking, and Allah is saying, you know, when you're under attack, then you can resort to violence, only on the retaliatory front, right? And to be fair, sometimes, sometimes, that is the case, not always. Um, in the verse that I just read, do you remember how it began? It began, those who wage war against God and his messenger. So yeah, that could be interpreted as, you know, only when, when you're being attacked, then you can cut off their arms and, and, and legs. But now I will tell you a few problems with, with this response. First of all, it's not always the case. It, is, it appears to be sometimes the case, but there's a lot of violence, right? There's like a plethora of violence. Um, so sometimes it, it is the case though, but still, like, do you not see how this ambiguity and openness to interpretation is problematic in itself, right? It says, those who wage war against God and his messenger. What does that mean to you? To you, that might mean like helicopters and tanks rolling in from the United States. That's waging war against, uh, against God. But to an Islamist, waging war against God and his messenger could be something as, as simple as drawing cartoons of the, of, of the prophet, right? Or an ideological war. When they asked Osama bin Laden, why did you do what you did? He said, we were at war, an ideological war with the West. This is before America got into Afghanistan, right? So even if your interpretation is right, right? When there's 1.8 billion people who believe that this is the word of God, when they read, kill the infidels, can you really be surprised that they go out and 
Spoiler alert, kill the infidels? No, like the like context or no context, God should not be saying those things, right? Also, it's a little bit rich of you to say that like your interpretation is correct and their interpretation is not correct. I'm not saying I have the right interpretation. I most certainly don't. <laughs> uh, in fact, I, I don't have it. I don't know if there is a right interpretation. I don't have interpretation. I, I don't believe any of this. But for you sitting on the couch, drinking alcohol to say like, ah, yes, but that's you know the wrong interpretation. Eh, it's a bit arrogant, my friends. It really is. Um, this is just one of the, the violent verses. The, 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 there's plenty more. Um, but also, like, sticking with this context thing. Okay, sure, context is important. But think about your favorite book, or one of your favorite books. If you read something out of context, whether it's fiction or nonfiction, what's the worst that's gonna happen? The worst that's gonna happen is you're not gonna understand what, what the book is saying, right? One of my favorite books, Sir Alex Ferguson's autobiography, well, some of that. Leaving. It's a great book, I highly recommend it. Um, and no point in the 580 pages does Sir Alex go like, eh, murder the Jews. <laughs> Can't do a Scottish accent, but he never like incites violence against the Jews. Um, he's a little bit indifferent towards people from Liverpool, but like, there's no incitement to violence. I'm fairly confident in your favorite books. Also, like there's no, like if you misinterpret it, nothing bad is gonna happen. This is something that is almost exclusive to these religious books. Okay, maybe Sun Tzu's Art of War, right? You could read that and and, and act out on it, but. If you believe that this is the word of God, which Muslims do or are supposed to, then when you believe attack the infidels, my friends, you can't be surprised. They, they, they kill the infidels. <laughs> and also, final point, in some cases, th there's no context in the world that makes it okay. And we'll look at one case now. Okay, so that was violence. What do you wanna do now? I figured we do um, anti-women, misogyny, so you have a little bit of choice here, a little sippy. So um, there's the hijab verse. Well, it doesn't say hijab or niqab. Um, it doesn't say anything about that. It says women must cover their, maybe I'll read it out. We have time, I think. Tell believing women they should lower their gate glances, guard their private parts and not display their charms beyond what is acceptable to reveal. So that's literally the, the only thing that that's where hijabs and niqabs, all that shit comes from. There's another one in here that says um, women are entitled to less inheritance than men. One third, I think, which, you know, in the context of the time made sense because men were the breadwinners, but we're not in that time anymore. Right. And there's another one that here that says, um, if you need witnesses, you need two men for every one woman witness. Understandable because you know women's cognitive capacity is limited. Um, with their tiny, tiny brains. Um, yeah, that's there. <laughs> then there's one that says um, <laughs> when one of your wives is menstruating it's on her period, um, leave them be, put them in a separate room <laughs> because they need to be clean for you. Which <laughs> I always thought like what? Allah's quite the romantic. <laughs> but the one I ended up going with is probably the most. You might have seen it, heard it before. It's the most infamous one. Oh, I sticks for this. Okay, flippity flip. Okay, can you see? If you fear high-handedness from your wives, remind them of the teachings of Allah. Then ignore them when you go to bed. Then hit them. If they obey you, you have no right to act against them. God is most high and great. So incidentally, this is also a Chris Brown lyric. <laughs> okay, like that, that, that doesn't look great, right? It's very fucked up. So what would a context motherfucker say in, in, in this case? Well, they would say something like, yes, but you have to understand that 1,500 years ago, it was the norm to beat your wife. Everyone was doing it. Yes, my friend, but the problem is we're not 1,500 years ago. We're now where we don't beat our wives and we're stuck with this because this is the eternal perfect word of God. Interpretation, I, I shit you not, someone has said to me, yes, but you, the interpretation, it's a metaphor. You beat them metaphorically, you beat them with love. Come on, fuck off, fuck right off. Okay, so interpretation isn't really gonna do you much good here. 
what will you go for? At this point, the apologist will might say something along the lines of this. Sasha, my friend, what translation are you using of the Quran? Well, the Abdul Salim one, like the number one on Amazon, like 5,000 five-star reviews, highly recommended by the Muslim community. Ah, you see, that's a bad translation. If you want to really appreciate the beauty of the Quran, you need to read it in the original classical Arabic. Oh, what's that? You don't speak the classical Arabic. Oh, inshallah. Oh no, what a shame, what a shame. <laughs> Mind you, the person saying this to me, nine times out of ten, they barely speak regular Arabic, let alone classical Arabic. So yeah, but we give them the benefit of the doubt. Perhaps. Perhaps, right? Look, things get lost in translation. Um, if you've ever tried translating a poem from one language to another, you know certain words, certain phrases, it's almost impossible to translate, right? And this is done, this is part of it's like a game of Chinese whispers played over millennia, right? Like shit. Things will get lost in translation. Um, <laughs> I don't know how much get lost in translation. Because like, you'd expect the person translating be your, don't be, be your wife to take particular care with translating that, right? Like, unless it said don't beat your wife, <laughs> he fucked up real bad. Um, okay, so we're in a little bit of a pickle, right? I don't speak classical Arabic. You don't speak classical Arabic. Hmm. I, I think I have a solution, though. <laughs> we can go ask someone who does, right? Your, you know, theology PhD students, your Islamic scholars, your imam from the mosque in your neighborhood, they will be able to tell us in the classical Arabic what it said. And in fact, maybe today, hashtag read the Quran, read the Quran. Tomorrow, wake up bright and early, hop out of bed, walk on over to your local mosque, which I'm sure is within a kilometer away from you, paid for by your taxes. Go to the mosque. Um, oh, wait, wait, wait. Let's rewind. Ladies, hold your horses. Um, first, go online and check, like, which days and which hours you're allowed to go to the mosque because you can't have men and women in the same room because they might fuck each other, right? So you're only allowed to go at certain times. Um, also, I just found out this week, fun tidbit, in the UK... 25% of the mosques don't allow women inside. Allah, the feminist. <laughs> okay, so if you can't go to the mosque, go to the mosque. No, seriously, go to the mosque. It's, they, they are architecturally um, beautiful buildings. You know, you make a, a trip out of it. Go to the mosque, knock on the door, <laughs> ring the bell. <laughs> Fuck, so the mom opens up and go. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> This Russian Islamophobe on my Instagram is saying all these mean things about Islam. <laughs> no, so just like ask straight up, like, look, beat your wife. Does, does it say beat your wife? <laughs> okay, so. I actually did go to the mosque here in Regent's Park. Beautiful mosque. And I did ask about this specific verse, right? So I want to know, what did the original classical Arabic say? I asked him, mom. <laughs> oh, man, I'll never forget what he said. <laughs> okay, so he said something. <laughs> he was like, no, 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 no. We don't do that here. We, we don't beat. <laughs> but then he was like, we have a tappy stick. <laughs> so when your wife is misbehaving, you can tap her with the tappy stick. <laughs> It's like, what? The fuck is a tappy stick? So like, there's this thing. I think they used to like clean their teeth with it. There's a stick, right? It's like a toothbrush. <laughs> but he's like, we don't beat. We use the tappy stick. If, you're my, if your wife is misbehaving, you tap, tap, tap. <laughs> Which I thought fucking hilarious. Well, you wouldn't if you're a woman, but uh, it's progress, right? But, <laughs> uh, but he didn't deny that in the original classical Arabic, but, that's what it said. Um, hit them. Right, now, I, I guess you could say, hit them, but hit them how? How hard? Doesn't look good, does it? And there's no surprise that like domestic abuse is rife in the, in the Muslim world. Okay, so while you're at the mosque, 
<laughs> while you're there, you might as well like look around, just make sure there's no shady shit going. <laughs> like if you see a vest with like wires coming out of it, just pick no. Does that mean? Am I allowed to say that? Fuck that. I've said way worse. No, but seriously, be polite if you do go. Don't be a dick. Um, enjoy. Get the cultural enrichment. <laughs> but also, while you're there, you can ask about other shit, right? They're, they're very helpful. You could be like, Imam, hey, Imam, hey, my, my son is gay. Is that cool with you guys? Like, is being gay a-okay in Islam? And I think you will be unpleasantly surprised <laughs> to hear his response. Um, speaking of the gays, um, should we do homophobia next? I think that was on the menu. So the Quran, it, it doesn't actually, there's not that much about homophobia, but it doesn't actually say homosexuals or anything like that. Um, do you know the story of Lot? <laughs> no, anyone? <laughs> That's fine, doesn't matter. You lust after men rather than women. You transgress all bounds. Drive them out of your town. These men want to keep themselves chaste. Chaste or chaste? Chaste, right? I have no idea what that means. We saved them from his people, apart from his wife who saved behind. And we showered upon them a rain of destruction. See the fate of evildoers. So this rain of destruction has been misinterpreted as a stoning. But it has backing in the hadiths. So there's the, fuck, I forgot, that's, I knew I forgot something. There's the Quran, which is the word of God. And then there's also the hadiths, which are codified. Um, it's the sayings and doings of the prophet. And in those sayings and doings of the prophet, there are um, instances of stoning the homosexuals, taking sex slaves, all that yada yada. So look, this is probably the least contentious of the things that we'll cover today, right? Like everyone knows, um, I hope everyone knows, you can't be gay and Muslim. Um, that being said, it doesn't fucking help that like once a month, Vice News will run an article saying, meet the world's first gay, transgender, one-legged, Muslim, Christian, Jew, feminist. Right? And you're just like, really? Muslim, gay, feminist. Gay, Muslim, feminist. A gay Muslim? Right. Okay. Sure. Explain. Explain. Explain how. Like, look. There's not a single school of Islamic jurisprudence that will tell you homosexuality is acceptable, right? Um, on the one hand, I want to make fun of these people because <laughs> it's so tempting. Um, because also, it's like, how delusional do you need to be to think that homosexuality is compatible with Islam? There's not an imam worth his salt who will tell you that's the case. It, just, it, it ain't, it can't be. But now, I, I've been thinking about it over the last few weeks, I think maybe we should be giving support to these voices, no matter how batshit insane they are, because maybe supporting the Muslim feminist and the gay feminist, like that's one way to, you know, um, break the cycle or, you know, force uh, some kind of reform. But I do think these people are, are first of all, risking their lives. Second of all, they're not gonna get any backing in the Muslim community. So yeah, like, look, you know, you cannot be gay and Muslim, you cannot, harbor gay thoughts you cannot have a gay son and be muslim it, it, like that's not up for debate what would the apologists say at this point so the context argument didn't work the interpretation argument didn't work now they start grasping for straws right now they start grasping. so let's do something like this oh i fucking hate this response with a passion so i say like look islam is not compatible with homosexuality and they will say something like, oh yeah, but what about Christianity? What about Judaism? Christianity is not accepting of homosexuals. Oh, there's so much to say to that. Yes, <laughs> yes, you're right, it's not. But like, how the fuck is that an argument? How the fuck is that a defense of Islam? Like, if you're talking to an atheist, like myself, <laughs> then saying to them like, yeah, but Judaism is shitty towards the gays, and, you know, Christianity is sh shitty towards the gays. I know! Motherfucker, trust me, I know, I hate those bitches too. When I say those bitches, I mean the religions, not the people. I have to say that for legal reasons. Um, so that, 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 that's stupid. But more importantly, what are you doing when you do that? 
right? I, I'm saying to you, look, there's a problem with X, Islam. And you're going, ah, but what about Y? What about Z? You're doing two things. First of all, you're deflecting. It's deflection, right? Like you're deflecting attention away from what we're talking about to something else. But more importantly, this, what about that? What about this? There's a term, there's a term for it, there's a name for it. It's called whataboutism. Or in the UK, whataboutery. I would know because the Soviets were fucking the pioneers of this shit. <laughs> so at the height of the Cold War, <laughs> when, so, when Russians used to be like, hey, <laughs> why are we sending people to the gulags? The Soviet propaganda machine would be like, ah, but what about America and how they treat the black people? <laughs> Like, hey, why are we invading Afghanistan? Ah, but what about America and going into Vietnam? So always like, hey, what about them? Look at look what they're doing. Oh, they're doing shitty things too. Unfortunately, it worked a lot of the time, right? But it, it is not a response, right? Because what's happening here? I'm saying to you, I'm saying to you, dude, did you murder that prostitute? And you go like, yeah, I murdered the prostitute, but Bill murdered a prostitute and Ted murdered a prostitute. But motherfucker, you still murdered that prostitute. Like, the fact that others are doing shitty, the same shitty thing doesn't make it any better than you are, right? Answer me this question on the topic of homophobia. Is the fact that Christianity has a problem with homosexuals, does that in any way, shape, or form change the fact that Islam has a problem with homosexuals? No, it doesn't, right? Like... Focus on cleaning up your own backyard. Like, don't rope these motherfuckers into it. We're talking about Islam right now, right? But also, look, if you want to play this game, I really don't recommend you do if you're Muslim. Because, look, if there's a shittiness Olympics, this takes the gold medal first place, all right? Like, uh, okay, that's my opinion. I, I think Islam is the most damaging of all the Abramaic, the three Abramaic religions, it's, it's like the Harry Potter meme. Again, you three, it, it is them. But, look, if you have some time now, look into Sikhism, the Sikhs. Man, look into what Sikh temples do. The Jains, the motherfucking Jains. Shout out to the Jain boys from high school. This, the J Jainism is actually a religion of peace. No, no, for real, it really is. Like, the core tenet of Jainism is that of non-violence. Like, the, the more devout you are as a Jain, the less we have to worry about you. Like, they literally cannot harm a fly. <laughs> the most devout motherfuckers, when they walk on grass, they, they will avoid walking on grass for fear that it might kill the ants underneath. Compare that to cut off their arms and legs. Come on, man, that's night and day. Like, you cannot compare those two religions. If everyone, to, like, tomorrow, all the... <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna regret saying this. If tomorrow all the Muslims converted to Jainism, my God, the world would be a much less violent place. I'm sorry, but that that's true. So, what about ism? Look out for it, because it's very easy to spot. It usually begins with, yeah, what about Christianity? What about Judaism? It's not a reply. It doesn't absolve Islam of anything. But also, please, as, as a plea from me, Avoid doing that in any discussion, not just about religion, but like if someone says to you, like, dude, you have a problem with X, I don't like this, avoid going, oh, what about him? What about her? They also do it. Like, it's, if you're a high school teenager, I can understand. Donald Trump does this a lot. So that should say something to you. Um, you know, as Melania says, be best, do better, don't do that shit. What about him? Now that you know what it is, call it out when it happens. It doesn't matter that other religions are also homophobic. We know they are. We know they are. They also have problems. But, you know, focus on fixing the problems of your religion. Okay. I think we have time for one more, maybe. I don't know. Oh, fuck. 15 minutes left. Okay. Um, I was going to do blasphemy. Maybe kill the Jews? Kill the atheists? Uh, but then that dude got his head cut off in Paris. That's not funny. I don't, I'm laughing. So maybe I thought I would do... Okay, so just so you know, you who believe, do not take Jews and Christians as your friends. They are only friends to each other. It's kind of shitty. I want to be friends with, with Jews and Muslims. But I settled on... Shit. This. Flippity flip. Okay. 
those who insult God and His Messenger, aka me, will be rejected in this world by God and the world next. He has prepared a humiliating torment for them and those who undeservedly insult believing men and women and bear the guilt of slander and flagrant sin. They will be rejected wherever they are found. They'll be arrested and put to death. Now combine that with... When you meet the disbelievers in battle, strike them in the neck. And once they are defeated, bind any captive firmly. Later, you can release them by grace or by ransom until the toils of war have ended. That is the way. That is the way. So, yeah. Doesn't sound great. So, by this point, the apologists will say something like, Dude, you're just cherry-picking. You're just picking the worst things from here. You're ignoring all the good in the Quran. And, in their defense, there is some good here. There's, you know, love thy neighbor. There's no compulsion in religion. Donate a certain amount to charity. Um, all men are created equal. That shit's in there too. It is, it is. But, Habibi, it doesn't work like that. Like, it, it's not like five kill the infidels and ten love thy neighbor. Net plus five, right? That's more good than bad. No, no. Like, if this is the word of Allah, of God, like, one kill in the infidels is one kill the infidels too many, right? Like, the maximum amount of misogyny, um, homophobia, violence that should be in God's final revelation is, is zero. Exactly zero. Any more than that. And it opens the door for the shit that we see. Right, so the reason I chose those is... Did I read the strike them in the neck bit? Right, so when that dude chopped that motherfucker's head off in Paris... Um, you know, there was this like, oh, he doesn't represent Muslims. Like, do you know how difficult it is to cut someone's head off? Like, feel your neck right now. You feel that bone in the middle? Have you ever cut a piece of meat this wide? It's near impossible, right? So do you think he did this like as a symbolic gesture or he saw it on mortal combat? No, he did it because the book told him to do it, right? So there's this like, this, this false narrative of um, ISIS have nothing to do with Islam, right? Um, some of you guys, I'm sorry to say, would make the world's worst like detectives, private investigators. Like, please never come home. Forget about the fact that when these ISIS motherfuckers storm a place, they're literally yelling at the top of their lungs, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. God is the greatest. Allah is the greatest. Let's, let's pretend what they're saying is, oh my God, because it also means, oh my God. Let's pretend they're saying that. Sure, fine. The next day, when the cops raid their hideouts, what did they find? They find this scattered around the place. They find prayer mats. They find handwritten notes saying, we are committing these atrocities for these references from the Quran, <laughs> right? And then you have some fucking dickhead, like political science major going, I guess we'll never know their true motivations. It's probably a combination of socioeconomic factors, anti-Arab bigotry, and Western foreign policy intervention in the Middle East. Shut the fuck up, dude. Shut the fuck. I have no time for these people anymore. I have, like, if at that point, when it's all staring you in the face, you can't put two and two together, God have mercy on your soul. Like, come on, man, be honest with yourself. I sometimes like to think what it would be like to be one of these jihadi bombers, right? Like, you live and you breathe this book. Like, you can recite it backwards, you know, like the back of your hand. Eventually comes a day where you decide your final journey in jihad to become a martyr. Literally give your life up for Allah. It happens. Die. Get to paradise, right? Chilling in paradise with your 72 virgin bitches. <laughs> you look back down to earth. And what do you see? You see some stupid white bitch by the name of Brittany on Twitter, hashtag pray for Paris. She's using a typewriter for some reason. Hashtag, what an awful, awful day. Hashtag, these are not real Muslims. This is not real Islam. Oh, Brittany, shut the fuck up, you stupid bitch. 
the audacity, the audacity to say, this is not real Islam, these are not real Muslims. Fucking hell, you stupid cow. If I was this jihadi bomber, you know what I would do? I would come back down to earth and I would haunt this pathetic bitch to her dying days. How could she say that this is not real Islam? These are not real Muslims. Unfucking believable. Okay, before we did four verses, I'm getting a little bit wrong. Before we finish, I want to engage you in a little thought experiment. I want you to close your eyes. Don't worry, Jeffrey Epstein is dead. He didn't kill himself though. I want you to close your eyes. I want you to imagine that tomorrow, a new book comes out. Let's say that Mark Manson motherfucker, the subtle art of not giving a fuck. Let's say he wrote it, right? New book comes out, The Ten Commandments for Life, right? Chapter three, women are inferior to men and you have God-given right to hit them. Chapter five, homosexuality is a sin and they should be punished. Chapter eight, those who question Mark Mansonism can be met with force, with violence. This book comes out, go straight to the New York Times bestseller. What would you do? What would you do? I know what you would do. You would find this motherfucker on Twitter and you would demand his head on a platter. How dare he say women are inferior to men? How dare he say homosexuals are like lepers? You would not stand for that shit. So my question to you is, why do you make an exception for this? This has all of that and more. But like, for some reason, we treat Islam as some charity case that we gotta walk around on eggshells for, right? That we gotta do special, like it's like a retarded younger brother that you gotta get the training wheels to. Sam Harris has a term for this. He calls it the bigotry of low expectations. And it, 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 basically he's saying like, people are like, oh, well, you have to be understanding of, you know, the Muslim culture because it's a relatively young religion. Like, you know, you need to understand this difference of culture. No, motherfucker. What do you mean young? It's 1,400 years old. I'm sorry, I wanna live in a world where women are equal to men. I wanna live in a world where homosexuals are not persecuted. If you're agreeing with me, then you're also in opposition to Islam. I'm sorry to tell you that. <clears throat> Why the fucking double standard? But hold on, continue with this thought experiment. If this, this book now, you know, sold a billion copies, would you change your point of view? No, you wouldn't, I hope you wouldn't. Look, your values are important, stick up for them. <laughs> okay, how long have we been doing this for? It doesn't say. But, all right, so I am just anticipated some questions people might have. <laughs> so first of all, get the usual. Sasha, why are you picking on the Muslims? Always picking on the Muslims. So first of all, I'm not picking on the Muslims. I'm picking on Islam, I am, but I told you I would be doing that, right? The title of the talk is my favorite poem. If it makes you feel any better, we can do one of these for Christianity and Judaism. Sure, fuck it up. What, after coronavirus, I'll wear an undercover camera. We'll go fuck with, I'll go to the Scientology Center here in London. We'll go fuck with the Scientologists. They're fucking hilarious. Maybe Tom Cruise will show up. We'll do all that. Don't you worry, we'll do all that. I'm not picking on Muslims. I'm not demonizing Muslims. I think Allah does a pretty good job of that. I am simply saying to you, I don't, I don't agree with the things that, that are preached in this book. And I think if you think about it, neither do you. I'm just more vocal about it. That being said, not a month goes by where some sad excuse of a human being slanders me as being an Islamophobe. Um, it's like you know a chimpanzee flinging feces at a wall. It's a pathetic word uttered by an even more pathetic individual. Um, there's a quote about Islamophobia, which I'll we'll recite to you, which I'm quite fond of. Islamophobia is a word created by cowards used by fascists to manipulate morons. And I don't think that's too far from the truth. This is a word that is purposely designed to conflate any genuine criticism of the doctrine of Islam with anti-Muslim bigotry. Only one of those two things is, is wrong, right? Um, so there's a, go on the Wikipedia page for Islamophobia. It's quite an interesting read. Um, okay. Fuck, 10 minutes left. So you might ask me, Sasha, why do you care so much? My question is to you is, why do you not care? <laughs> right, like this is important. Like, were you not paying attention to the homophobia and the misogyny and all that? <laughs> okay, also like, I don't want to fear monger guys, but terrorism will come back. 
whether you like it or not. For a while, I was convinced I was gonna perish in a terrorist attack. I know that sounds stupid, I don't even wanna admit it. But like, because statistically, it makes no sense. You're like 100 times more likely to die in a car accident. But like, you know, I knew people who were at the Brussels airport bombing. I knew people who were in South of France who got hit by the lorry. It just felt like it was coming closer and closer. I had like premonitions. By the way, also I have a big fucking mouth so you can see it happening. If I do perish in a terrorist attack, Islamic terrorist attack, please, please, I'm gonna go on record, play the Curb Your Enthusiasm song at my funeral. <laughs> You know the bum 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 It's only fitting, right? Like, also take note of which of my Muslim friends are like, ah, he had it coming, he had it coming. Okay, uh, also you might ask, why read this if I'm not Muslim? If I don't care, like if I think this is all fantasy, why should I read it? Well, this is a stupid question again, because I think you should read this for the same reason you should read something like Mein Kampf. Right? You should read things that you don't necessarily agree with. Yeah, that's right. I will put this book in the same category as Mein Kampf. One of these books is written by a madman and the anti-Semitic ramblings of, and the other is Mein Kampf. <laughs> Fuck, I fucked up that joke. <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> well, maybe it came through. Anyways, forget it. Fuck it. Uh... Okay, so look, I get everyone has their own causes. That's fine. I don't expect you to be as vocal about Islam as I am. The only thing I don't appreciate is this hypocrisy and, and selective outrage. Let me give you an example. The same people who are saying to me, no, the same, sorry, the same people who are out there going, we should who want to remove a statue of some army general who may or may not have farted on one of his slaves once a hundred years ago, are the same people saying to me, Sasha, you can't be sharing these cartoons. This is really, really, you know, um, offensive to Muslims that they revere the Prophet. My friends, do you need a little uh, history lesson in the Prophet Muhammad? I, th I think you do. I think you do. Let's do a little history lesson in the Prophet Muhammad. Again, fact check me if I'm wrong. The Prophet was not like Jesus figure. He didn't spread, he wasn't crucified for his, but he was a peace love hippie who was crucified for his beliefs. He spread the faith through violent conquest. Muhammad was, by nearly all historical accounts, he was raping, pillaging, warmonger, who sanctioned the use of sex slaves, sanctioned the stoning of homosexuals. There's not an Islamic scholar in the world who will deny to you that the Prophet was 53 years old when he married his third wife, Aisha, who was seven at the time. A 53 year old man, they consummated the marriage, AKA fucked, AKA, let's, let's be honest, what's the real word? Raped, 53, she was 10 years old. Look it up, look it up, I have time. I have time, I'm gonna pour myself a drink, look it up right now. Aisha age Muhammad, uh, I'm gonna, do a favor to the apologist well, as you're Googling away. Uh, if you look on like page three or four of the Google results, uh, there's one Islamic scholar who says, and I quote, Aisha may have been as old as 14 years old when Muhammad consummated the match. So use that, send that to me, sure, we'll, we'll go with that. Come on, you're asking me to respect someone who fucked a 10 year old when he was 53 years old? What, what kind of upside down world are we living in? Get fuck, fuck off. Suck my uncircumcised dick. I'm not going to. Okay, definitely should stop drinking at this point. Okay, two, two last things. So what now? Don't rely on just this. Please, please get your hands on one of these. I have like 50 of these lying around my room. Ever since people started telling me like oh, the wrong translation, I made sure I have all the translations. So I have like a Dutch one of these, I have a, a Russian one of these, Chinese, I have a Hebrew. Do you know how hard it is to get a Hebrew Quran? I had to buy that shit on eBay. It's a collector's edition. So if you really want, if you're in London, I will send you my Quran. But even simpler, go on amazon.com. You can download the Quran for your Kindle for free. You can download the Quran.com app. You can go to Quran.com, very simple, uh, fun tidbit, Quran.com changed that translation a few years back. Um, they like changed it to, I think this translation from the Pickfell translation. And there was a little uproar in the Muslim community and in the, in the non-Muslim community. These guys were saying like, 
wait, 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 why are you toning it down? And these guys were saying like, wait, you're whitewashing, because they really did to uh, use the toned down translation. Uh, okay, so I'm going to leave you with a Hitchens quote. It's the one that you might have seen on my post. Like, Take the risk of thinking for yourself. Ah, I forgot to say that. And so much more beauty, wisdom, knowledge will come to you that way, right? Don't rely on just this. Read. Go online. Go Google. Uh, Quran verses, violent, whatever. Look at the, the good verses. Um, like we're in lockdown. What else you got to do, man? You might as well do that. Uh, what are you, you going to look at memes? By the way, me posting memes, that was all just an act it's just to lure you in, give you a false sense of security. And then when you least expect it, bam, hit you with that Islamophobia. <laughs> okay, final, final thing. Um, if there's something that I said that you really, really disagree with, right, that you would like me to respond to, um, by all means, you, you can message me. <laughs> yeah, before you fucking didn't, to be honest. But, you know, just do me one favor. Type it up and then ask yourself a question. Do I really believe in this argument? Or am I, like, making this argument to, like, defend Islam kind of thing? Um, write it up. Maybe sleep on it first. And then tomorrow morning, if you read it again and it still makes sense, sure, content. If you want, guys... So we're on lockdown. There's an option to do like, well, I hope I have my Instagram live back tomorrow, <laughs> next week. We can do a debate. Well, I'll debate. Sure. Anyone wants to debate, we can debate. I think that's basically it. <laughs> Shit. I really wish I could have done this live, guys. But I hope you're watching it on Instagram TV. Um, okay. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Mm, politely fuck off now. Bye-bye. <laughs>